So this is me. The only thing I want to mention here is that I did start an education nonprofit called Low Carb Diabetes Association. And it's at uh, lowcarbdiabetes.org. It's free to join. There's a lot of good uh, interviews and a lot of good videos and le lessons and so forth on the uh, site. Um, so please feel free to consider joining. So as we know, um, the ketogenic diet, as we know, is a fat-burning diet uh, in the body, right? So we are literally, as you know, burning ketones. We consider it really our lowest low-carb diet option. And you can see on this slide, generally, a fat is designed to be the vast majority of the diet. Uh, and then a little bit carb, um, moderate protein. Actually, with the ketogenic diet used for epilepsy, which is where it was first born 100 years ago, uh, it's even up to 92% fat, uh, much more strict than what we really need to be when we're just trying to do it to maximize our health, reverse diabetes, prevent diabetes, our athletic performance, and so forth. So, and those are what we're using it for. Uh, that's, those are the patients that I'm prescribing it for, mostly in these type of categories. Now, anybody can do it, but it's just so scientifically verified, beneficial in these regards. Now, how does this diet, though, affect the gut, right? So, when we talk about the, I mean, the gastrointestinal tract includes many organs, really from your stomach, your pancreas, gallbladder, liver, large gut, and small gut. But here, I'm really just going to be focusing on the intestinal tract, which is the small intestine. Now, small intestines are 20 feet. You know, they say what they've measured is that if we take that small intestine and laid it out on the ground, its square footage equals a double-sized tennis court, a tennis court for doubles. That's how much area there is for us to absorb all the nutrients that we're eating in every day. It's a little mind-blowing, right? Now, the colon is five feet. Now, it's much, much wider than the small intestine. And most people think, you know, that the colon is just stuck down here, but, but it's not. It connects here with the small gut, then goes all the way up here to what we call the liver flexure, over to here, to the splenic, and then down and around. So it's really uh, encapsulating kind of, a, of the peripheral of the entire area of our torso, right? So here's a very simple picture, uh, excuse me, uh, of the small gut, which is kind of all crowded in the middle and then that really very large colon, uh, which is much smaller in size, but much larger in diameter. So this is 25 feet. I mean, I'm five feet too, so you know, add four more of me, and, and that's how long my intestines are, right? So it's a pretty awesome uh, part of our body. And what we're learning now is that you know, it's not just about digesting your food and absorbing the nutrients. It's really regulating the health of it in the gut itself, and, but also throughout the entire body and your mind, right? And the gastrointestinal tract, as a general rule, as Lisa said, uh, you know, about half my practice is working with a lot of gastrointestinal conditions such as uh, you know, irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel, gallstones, prime, you know, biliary problems, digest stomach problems, etc. And this is a big part of problems in people's health today. I mean, if you go to the, if you go to the drugstore, I mean, that aisle for the gut is pretty long, right? You've got the gas and the diarrhea and then the constipation and, you know, and maybe some probiotics. It's all different kind of things people are trying to do. Antacids, right? Antacids are so popular among patients right now because of the need. So this is not a healthy part of our body 
for the really vast majority of people uh, that have life, well, that are lives in America today. It's a huge irritable bowel syndrome is the number one gastrointestinal condition that's seen uh, in gastroenterology offices, right? So 30, uh, 30 million Americans percent-wise have it. So when we're going on therapeutic diets that have, we're trying to have certain aims we kind of always have to think about how is this going to affect the gut and how can I manage this diet so it achieves the goals I want, but I'm preserving this gut. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. So the gut microbiome, you've probably heard that term, right? Maybe you do or don't really know exactly what it is, but in our intestinal tract, right, we've got bacteria, viruses, we've got kind of pro-bacteria called archae, and we have fungal species. These are all native to the gut. They're supposed to be there, and they work very well in our body, doing a lot of good things, right? Now, as you may have heard, this kind of goes around Google or a weird statistic that we have like a hundred trillion bacteria in our intestinal tract, which is more cells than we have in the whole rest of our body, right? So in fact, when you have a bowel movement, about a third of it is undigested food, a third of it are cells from the gastrointestinal tract that just die and we just get rid of, and a third are bacteria, right? So it's, this is a huge part of every day of our, our life and what's going on. Now, in the small gut, we have much less bacteria. We generally say 10 to the third, and they measure this by taking this little quarter, like say a quarter teaspoon. If they dipped it down and lifted it up, how many would they, and they have about 10 to the third is around a thousand, what we say CFUs of bacteria. So there, it's not a lot, but there are some beneficial bacteria in the small gut, and they do a lot of benefits there. Now in the colon, this is really where we say the microbiome, because the bacteria count in the colon is like 10 to the 12th. So uh, let's see, that's, is that, that's what's after a trillion. So, you know, it's a big number, right? It's a lot more bugs. And this is where we say, oh, antibiotics are bad. They're going to you know, wipe out your microbiome, and maybe you're going to get C. difficile diarrhea or something. That's that organ that we're really worried about when we're taking antibiotics. And we're wiping out a lot of bacteria because they're there mostly in that large gut. And they do their own thing in the gut. And actually, as you'll see, I'm kind of going to be focusing on all the bacteria, what they specifically do in that large gut.